Hello there, this is Alana Tucky. I'm the lead faculty for Math 133, and these are going to be the lecture notes for Chapter 2. Now, just a heads up about what Chapter 2 is about. Chapter 2 is going to be a lot of making tables and charts, graphs, that kind of thing. Um, let, me, let me pause one second. There, these kinds of things. So we're going to be working in Excel, as you can see, to do these. I mean, nobody wants to make this kind of thing by hand. It's kind of useless when a computer can do it so quickly and easily. And we're going to learn how to do that in addition to everything else that we learn. So let's begin. So in section 2.1, we're particularly interested in organizing qualitative data. Now remember from chapter 1, qualitative data is categorical data, namely data that you couldn't perform meaningful calculations on. So, and this doesn't show up in the book, but it shows up in real life a lot, so I thought I would throw it in there. This the following is a pictograph. It came from the Ryan plan, um, which was a budgetary plan. If you're interested, you can click on the link. Um, it's very exciting reading. Um, and then this was a graph that was inside that plan, to showing the taxpayer supporting each Social Security recipient. Excuse me. So, for example, in 1950, there were this many workers financially supporting that person's social security, right? In 1960, it was this many workers supporting that one person's social security, and so on, right? So here we were at 2009, which is when this report came out, came out in 2010, but that was the most recent data. So you can see how many workers there were to support one recipient. And then down here in 2040, that's what they're saying there will be. So the first question is, how many workers per Social Security recipient was there in 1950? So in 1950, for every one worker that was receiving Social Security, there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I don't know, 16 and a half maybe? So about 16.5. What about 2000? In 2000, it was only one, two, three, and a half or so, about 3.5. Now, there are a couple disadvantages to making pictographs. You can probably see what that big problem is. Like, do I really know if this is 16 and a half or 16.7? You don't really know. So, um, pictographs. Do not um, allow for easy understanding of fractions or decimals. For example, in 1950, how much is that last figure that is cut? Who knows, right? Could be 0.4, it could be 0.5, it could be 0.6. We don't really know. It could be 0.63. Um, are there any positives, any upsides to using a pictograph? Well, that's debatable, but ooh, you know what? Let me hold on one second. There we go. I labeled them disadvantages and advantages. Now, are there any advantages? Well, not many, um, but there there is the whole... Uh, belief that showing pictures is more visually interesting. And can um, relate the graph to the human experience more than just, you know, a pie chart, for example. Um, so there's a famous paper about this that basically if you're talking about people, then showing pictures of people kind of helps the, the reader relate what's going on to the real life human condition. It's not as um, dry and um, lifeless, <laughs> so to speak, as a pie chart or a bar chart or something like that. I mean, if you're talking about humans, then why not show figures of humans? It catches the eye and it draws readers in and makes them look at the data more closely. So there is that argument to be made. However, I would argue that the disadvantages far away those advantages, namely you don't know how much the decimal portions are.